Good morning. Welcome to Sacred Sunday Sadhana number six. Sacred Sunday Sadhana six, what's that? Today's topic that we're going to be delving into is fear. And I thought it would be appropriate for me to wear my new earbud microphone tools. Um, I got them months and months ago months and months ago. I think Jackie is actually the one who suggested to me, but I've been resistant because it's new and because I don't know um, how exactly it's going to be. I've been just stuck in the way of doing things that I was doing, even though there's a better way. And that's because of fear, right? So as technology progresses and in our lifetimes, it's like exponential growth every day. Um, it's really, really important for us, if we're interested in Wu Wei, going with the flow, to, um, to embrace newness and change. And even if it feels like, you know, it's scary or it's new, it's okay. We can do it. So the thing I'm loving about the microphone here is that I can be soft and gentle and you can still hear me. So there's a way in which I get louder and the softness goes away. I don't know how to project and still be soft. So these are amazing. Thank you, Jackie, for the recommendation. It feels like a month has passed since last week. Do you know what I mean? I think um, when we go on vacation, usually is when we're able to experience that, like, wow, time goes slowly. Because usually it feels like time goes so fast. There's so much going on. But I feel like during this pandemic, one of the silver linings, there's so many, the whole experience is probably going to turn out looking very shiny. Um, but one thing is that with all the time that we have to sit with ourselves and with what is and process, so much growth happens. So much is happening all the time. So the amount of growth that maybe I would have done in a year is kind of compressed into a few weeks. Um, but let's get started. Let's, let's dig in. Find yourself in a seated position or standing or laying down. Check in with what's right for you at this minute. Just because it's right for me doesn't mean it's right for you. So see what you individually need at this minute. I've chosen to be poised looking at the outside. You'll often see my eyes get distracted by a butterfly or a bird. Um, but it helps me. I learned um, long ago, back in, I think, 2008 from Carrie Elizabeth Smith at BTI that it's important for some people, and I'm one of those people, to have... Um, to have like reference points that are fixed. And so that can translate if you're teaching a yoga class, um, it can be like maybe there's an altar in the room and maybe there's a plant in the corner and those become the focal points so that you can remain grounded as you teach and you won't get um, swept off your feet or you know just misguided as things come up as students do things that you weren't expecting um, and for me if I'm just teaching to my phone it also helps me to stay stay with you I'm staying with you I can't see you but I'm staying with you because I have these like fixed points in time so just sharing that for a yoga teaching perspective or teaching or being a public speaker of any kind let's breathe Breathe fully into your belly, into your lower three chakras, into the root, into the sacrum, into your solar plexus.
And if you can just assign one word to each of your chakras, and I invite you and encourage you to do that, both in your teaching and in your own, in your own resetting of your body, realigning your energetic body, then you can just use that one word to sort of hold the essence. It holds the entire package, the whole seed of everything that that chakra represents. So for me, the first chakra is about security, safety. So I breathe into my security and safety. The sacral chakra for me is about creation and sensuality. I'm using two words because I'm a Gemini. You can use one, two, three. So breathing into my sensuality and creativity. And then the third chakra, the word for me is divine worth. And I know, I know now, I have not always known, but that divine worth is inherent. It's not something that we earn, it's something that we simply, we receive just by being ourselves and showing up, we receive that worth. It's not something we have to prove or, or dance for. It's a big wizard. <laughs> so fear has been on my mind and in my body. It's been washing over me. It's been overwhelming. It's been scary, obviously. So I've been sitting with that and like, what does that mean and what does it look like? And so there's so many things I want to address, just simple tools to give you, to remind you of how to work with fear when it's overwhelming or when it starts to show up. And sometimes just like noticing that the fear is there the worry that the fear is going to consume you is actually becomes more prevalent and just multiplies the fear. So if you can have tools in place where you know that you're going to be able to work with it, it can, it can prevent the fear from taking over and um, being like a poison that changes your, your chemistry. So the first thing I want to say, and I am going to move my body while I'm talking, I encourage you to move around too, if that feels right. The first thing is on Thursday in the middle of the night, I woke up, which is not unusual for me, but it's unusual for me to be flooded with fear. And it wasn't about any one thing in particular. I was just scared as if I had had a nightmare, you know, just like flooded. And my normal go-to when I feel fear is love because love is the antidote to fear. How do we access love? I like to access love through forgiveness, gratitude, and compassion. So sometimes it's enough for me. I learned this from Dr. Paul Douglas, my Ayurvedic mentor. Sometimes it's enough for me just to like internally give myself a hug and say, I love you so much. And just give myself that love and let it reach into all of the folds of my being. But sometimes when there's so much fear, it's like I don't have access to that love. It's like I can say the words, I can say, I love you, I love you. But it doesn't provide the immediate relief and it that it provides when I'm not drenched in fear. Um, saying I love you to myself when I'm judging myself is usually really quick. I'm like berating myself for something I did, something I said, something I thought, something I didn't do well enough. And then I just say, I love you. I love you so much. Like the way I would talk to my cats or my children or my best friends. Um, but when there's a fear present, that doesn't do the trick for me. So, and I have to get in a little deeper and I'll try, I'll think of forgiveness. Like, is, is this fear coming from resentment? Do I need, is there something I need to forgive myself for? 
or forgive someone else for? And sometimes the answer is yes. And just like letting myself feel the light of forgiveness makes the fear shrink and dissipate and get lighter and lighter and lighter until it's manageable and eventually gone. That wasn't working Thursday morning. So then I go to compassion. Like, is there something I need to be compassionate about for myself or for someone else? Surround those feelings with compassion. And that just wasn't getting at it. It was like I could not chip away at this fear. And the fact that I couldn't was just making it consume even more, get darker and darker. Like the shades of black were getting so dark, so dark. But then it becomes um, difficult to breathe and difficult to even find that Ananda Maya Kosha, that seed self, that the God inside of me, the goddess inside of me. Um, so then I go to gratitude and just start naming the things I am thankful for. And that always takes the edge off, always. I'm careful using the words always and never, but I mean it this time. Gratitude is a way that so far, and hopefully um, for us, gratitude is a way that I can at least start to like soften the edges and lighten it up. So I just start like thinking things that I'm truly grateful for. My, my animals and uh, the abundance that is my life and my career and my schooling and obviously my children. I just keep going through things I'm grateful for. And that sort of took it to a place where I was like, okay, I'm still completely overwhelmed with fear. And it's horrible. Like it feels bad. <laughs> I want to run away from it. But at least now, like I know if, if I can cultivate some gratitude right now, I give myself that win, you know, that feeling of like, okay, even in the midst of this, I'm able to access that gratitude and that love. And so I know that this is not going to last forever. And then I get myself in a place where it's like, okay, now what? So the next step for me in that place is feel it to heal it. Darren Wallen, my sound healer, shaman, therapist, friend. Feel it to heal it. And he even has me express, um, thank you for this feeling, even when it's a terrible feeling. And surrounding something that sucks with gratitude is funny like it makes me laugh laughter is medicine so like all of these medicines start cutting in you know gratitude love light seed self uh, laughter and thank you for this feeling i'm going to feel this to heal it i'm not gonna suppress it i'm not gonna depress it i'm gonna express it so what needs to be expressed i didn't have any tears it wasn't a sometimes a good cry can release some fear uh, that didn't do it. I wrote words that didn't do it. I expressed some a sentiment that I didn't know that I was holding on to um, to a person in my life, and that really helped release a lot of it. But there was still more. There was still more. And so I just I was just with it. So that's the next that's the next level, is recognizing your your want and knowing that it's not a need to escape but it's a desire to escape i want to escape that feeling and then acknowledging my desire to escape i can lean on the buddhist teachings of creating suffering by wanting something to be different than it is and just loving myself, honoring that I don't want to make some, I don't want to create suffering for myself. There's enough, there's enough shit. There's enough shit in the storm. I don't, I don't want to add any of that for myself. I want to remove blockages and soften and open and feel and allow and accept and not just create more and more and more suffering and get caught in this continuum where that becomes the norm. And so once I then could like get back into, okay, I'm not escaping this. 
I can't, I don't want to escape this. I am no longer desirous of wanting to escape the pain that is this fear. And that doesn't make it go away, but it makes it a choice. It makes it something I show up for. Like, okay, I'm feeling this. This is what this feels like. Um, if you've given birth, I feel like for me, that's the, the biggest example of like, staying inside something that feels bigger and crazier than humans generally experience. And there's like some beautiful freedom and even pleasure that comes from like, this is what this feels like. I don't need to escape what this feels like. These contractions feel the way they feel. This feels the way it feels. This feels the way it feels. This is what it is. I am the wave. We are the weaver. We are the web. We are the flow, we are the ebb. I just made myself cry. <laughs> and that's okay, expression, right? Expression, not suppression. So if you don't have the experience of childbirth um, to draw on, you can, experience, you can draw on the experience of being cold. And if you've never truly been cold, then I invite you to Fill a cooler with ice and stick your foot in it. Stick your hand in it. Not for a long time. See if you can do that for 30 seconds for a minute. And see if you can do it and notice the, the desire to like, <clears throat> to come out of that. And then see if you can get back in it and you know that you're safe, you know that you're sound, you know that you're in control, that you're choosing to put your hand or your foot in the cooler. And then saying like, okay, this is what this feels like. It's really uncomfortable. And it's a little painful. It's causing some anxiety <laughs> because my physical body is like, no, this is not how we maintain homeostasis. My nervous system's like sending all these signals. That's too cold. That's not gonna work. See if you can have your mind over matter and even your mind inside that matter and just and just feel this is what this feels like so all of that all of those last few minutes of talking were really just about being in it so getting inside the fear exploring it getting curious about it that's another gem from Darren Wallman is replacing the word the word worry with fear I'm so sorry replacing the word worry with curious. So getting really curious about your fear, going on an expedition with your little flashlight and exploring, like, I'm so curious about what this is. And I don't need, here we go, segueing into the next piece, once you feel it to heal it, I don't need to process this in my mind. My thoughts can't possibly process something that's happening on an emotional level. I'm not going to be able to cognitively figure this out with my brain. This feeling is coming from my emotional body. This is my emotional response. This is, it's inside my energy. And that's something that, that my brain isn't going to be able to talk myself through. I can't think myself through a feeling. So that's another huge piece that I, that I use. So let's, let's backtrack in case you want to make bullet points and just stick it by your bed or in the car, or wherever it may be where you feel these waves of fear. The first thing is to notice, to notice that it's there. Flood yourself of love with love if you can. If you can't access love, try forgiveness, compassion, and gratitude. Maybe that takes the edge off. If it doesn't, begin to start feeling it to heal it. Express thank you for this feeling. And I'll tell you something, thank you for this feeling is beautiful by itself, but 
<clears throat> I don't know if you can see, you can see what my arms are doing. Once you've got your arms in this position, maybe you've seen that TED talk about how this is a power pose. Like there's power in the Soma. When you have your arms up, your chin up, your eyes up or straight forward, your chest is open, your back is slightly arched. You can do it standing or sitting. Once you're in this position, you increase confidence in your body and there's a physiological response. It's been proven that if you do this before a job interview or before a speech or before something that you're about to tackle, before a test, it increases your performance and it, um, it alleviates anxiety and it helps you show up and, and be your best, the best version of yourself. So that's kind of a double, a double whammy when you're, thank you for this feeling. You don't have to sing it, but that adds in like the trifecta because once you sing, singing is a salve for your heart. It doesn't matter if you can sing or not. Everyone can sing. I don't have a voice that people would buy on records, you know? But I sing anyway, I'm gonna sing again for you, just so that like, you get, you get comfortable hearing your own voice. And I feel like it takes you, it takes you through um, to a new level of understanding yourself. Simrit, the Kundalini master that I've recently started um, attending, says that the sound of your voice, both spoken and sung, is the sound of your energy signature. How amazing is that? I used to recoil at the sound of my own singing voice because, I, I mean, it's all right. I got like, my, my singing voice is like maybe a five or six out of 10 at its best. And so I, I didn't want to hear it. Like, that's a 60 out of 100. Like, that's failing. Eh. That's not working, is how I used to say. But then loving myself, being less gent being more gentle, less harsh. And then also just like realizing like, oh my God, that's, that's the sound of my energy. That's my signature. My voice is how I express my energy signature. Yes, I want to hear myself. And she suggests that you sing to yourself. You sing mantra, you record it on your phone and you play it. You just listen to yourself sing. And the more you do and the more comfortable you become with that, uh, the more deeply embedded in acceptance you can become. So I digress, but singing is a sad for the heart. Thank you for this feeling. And then the next bullet point would be um, just not escaping, staying with it, stay. You know, Pema Chodron says that we stay, we have to train ourselves to stay with what is. It's like training a puppy. I've actually never had a puppy. And if I did, I don't know that training would be something I'm capable of, but I can train my mind for sure. So if you've had a dog, you can use the analogy she uses. Training the mind to stay is like training a puppy. And she, she says to herself and, and suggests that we say to ourselves, stay, stay, kada, kada, reward, you know? So try that for yourself too when you're feeling, whether it's fear or some other negative emotion that you notice like, I don't want to feel this. I do not want to be present for this. Instead of drinking or smoking or sleeping or having any compulsive behavior, whether it's sex or shopping or gambling or any of the things that um, can be pleasurable in extreme moderation that we just like do to death so that we can try to milk the sensation that we get from that and ignore what we're actually feeling. Stay. And honestly, the reward, if you're rewarding the puppy for staying, the reward is that you get to afterwards come out of it and be like, I did that. I did that. I'm trying not to cuss, but I did that. So all of those things happened for me on Thursday morning. And it was still there. 
And so I reached out to my community. I talked to two very close friends just about the fear that I was having. And uh, one of my friends, she's so dear, and she's been in my life since we were nine. So 1989, we've had this wonderful presence in my life. She was talking about the fact that she feels like right now, fear is kind of blowing over the planet the way that you see wind blowing over Earth, um, if you watch documentaries of any kind, nature documentaries. Um, and that just these waves of fear during this pandemic are just like sweeping the planet. And sometimes the, feel, the fear that we're feeling isn't because of anything specific that's occurring in our own individual lives, but it truly is just like the collective fear that's, that's out there. <laughs> Whether you consider yourself an empath or not, I don't think there's a way that anybody is not feeling these like just waves. It's like a pulse of fear. And that was really, really good for me to hear. Um, because I don't know about you. I'm not extremely analytical. I don't get trapped in my mind often. But when I'm scared, I do. When I'm scared, I like, what? Yeah, I want to figure it out. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. So when I'm like, okay, how can I, what is this happening? Like trying to rack my brain, literally figuring out what it is. And then I have a friend say to me, you know, this, this is a feeling and it's going around. It's contagious. It's happening then I'm kind of like, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. And, and I can sort of drop back into the heart space, which is where we want to be. We want to live here. This is where we want to live. We want to cultivate this beautiful, open heart space. The heart is the bridge between the, the being and the human. You know, the, the fourth chakra is this place between the upper three chakras of spiritual development and growth and connection to God and the lower three chakras of connection to earth and being in the human body, being in the soma, the ego. So we cannot exist harmoniously just here or just here. So being in the heart allows us to just really have this beautiful um, radiance in all seven of our chakras. The main chakras. This is a long one. Stay with me if you want to. Go if you're ready. Come back to it if you need to. And I would like to, I'm feeling where I want to go next. I'm going to bring back up the wolves. And we've talked about this a lot in our solar plexus tribe. But it's okay to have repetition. And honestly, everything is on repeat, you know? And sometimes you hear something, you hear it, you hear it, you hear it. The seventh time you hear it, it hits in a different way. And you're like, oh, I get this, I get this. Sometimes you hear things and the first time you're like, wow, I get that. And even that, um, you know, you don't use it. You start to lose it. And then someone says it and reminds you and you're like, yes, that, that, that. That's helpful for me, so. The wolves. There is the story of the Native American village where the grandson says to his grandfather, he describes this fight that he's got going on inside of himself constantly, this constant struggle between doing what's right and doing what feels like it's it's the highest expression of himself and doing this other thing that that feels dark and competitive and it's based on comparison and um, stepping on another person to lift yourself up and you know to win by being aggressive and to always need to be right and it's seductive and it's attractive and just because the other side seems light and 
divine and expressive and pure and good. There's something good about this other side too. And so he's describing this and the grandfather says, what you're describing is what lives inside all of us. We all have two wolves. We've got the love wolf and the fear wolf. And any, any emotions that you're feeling like anger, jealousy, resentment, contentment, contentment? No, being contempt, um, not content, contempt. Any of these feelings, they, they're coming from fear. They're fear-based. Anything that expresses itself in an angry or jealous or um, diminutive way, anything, even anything dogmatic or anything um, that makes someone want to create a downtrodden feeling for someone else, all of that is fear. It's just coming out of fear. Um, and it's harder to feel fear so that's why we go to anger so easily it's kind of easy like being hulked out like yeah i've got my hulk armor on nothing can hurt me but um it's momentary it doesn't feel good it's not a lasting feeling of goodness and um it ends up as we've said many times blocking us from feeling the other feeling the other emotion or the other expression that we're capable of which is love so anytime we're expressing gratitude, comp compassion, forgiveness, contentment, um, peace, bliss, joy, serenity, all of these states of being and all of these emotions and expressions are coming from love. So we've all got this love wolf and this fear wolf. And I think of, um, I think of the love wolf as white and the fear wolf as black. Uh, just because of the yin yang. But I think perhaps it's actually the fear wolf that's white and the, the, the love wolf that's black. So I'm going to switch that right now for myself because blackness is the vast potentiality. Think of the black sky where everything is possible. And it's got these little sparkles of love all throughout it, infinite love, possibilities, feminine energy um, and then the white is kind of white is comprised of all the colors at once so it's kind of like there's so much going on that's a very young energy doing 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 versus being black is the stillness the yin the white is the the fear that I gotta throw everything all these layers on top of it to cover up what's really happening and Aggression, yeah, these are all young qualities. This is all white, the white of the yin yang. So we've got the, the fear wolf and the love wolf, and we pet them both and we scratch them both. And they're fighting, they're in this constant tangle of fighting. And the grandson says, Well, who's gonna win the fight? And the grandfather says, The one you feed. So what you feed grows. It's really a simple concept. What you feed grows. So if you're feeding that fear, feeding that anger wolf, it's going to grow and it's going to consume you. So important to make that distinction between feeling it and feeding it. So while you, if you happen to ever have fear and you feel that overwhelming consumption of fear like I did on Thursday, feeling it and healing it means kind of like residing in it, shining the flashlight on it, exploring it, getting curious about it, accepting it, allowing it, but it's different than feeding it. Feeding it is like getting stuck in the head like, oh, it's because of this and this to this and I need to do this, and it's never going to go away, and this is so seductive, and it's because of this, and then blame, because blame feels good, I'm going to just feed that fear wolf. That's feeding versus feeling. So I hope you see the difference there. Feeding the love wolf looks like rising above and noticing that when there's a quality inside someone else 
that you think like, whoa, that is amazing. Like what you just said or what you just did, that's amazing. If you start to feel envy rising, like, hey, I wanted to say that, the love wolf inside you, feeding that love wolf would look like, I really honor and admire what you just said and did. And I know that you're a mirror of me. And so there must be that inside of me. And thank you so much for, for mirroring that for me. You mirror something that I, I want to express. That's feeding the love wolf. Flooding yourself with compassion and with gratitude and forgiveness. That's feeding the love wolf. So if you want the love wolf to win and to be prominent and to be able to subdue the fear wolf, then you just keep feeding it. And just like any animal or any, any living thing, it's a lifetime. This is a commitment of a lifetime. You can't just feed it and then go on vacation. You gotta hire a pet sitter. You gotta keep feeding the love wolf all the time, all the time, because otherwise, I'm switching analogies suddenly. <laughs> In, if it was a garden, then if you don't take care of these beautiful flowers, the weeds start to grow and consume, and then you're feeding the the weeds and you're feeding the consumption. Wow, I'm really going all over the place, but I hope it's good and I hope it's resonating. Fear is a doozy. It's a doozy. Um, the last, I think the last tool I'm going to share and mention and remind you that you have inside of you is the gift of time, the gift of noticing what was versus what is. So this is Saturday morning. I, I record these the morning before so that you can have your Sunday sit on a bright and early. But pretend it's Sunday. Thursday was days ago, regardless. And for me to sit here now You know what? It was Friday morning, not Thursday morning. It was just yesterday. It's just yesterday. And then that's kind of what I mean. It, it feels like so much time passes in such a short period of time. Like so much has happened for me internally since yesterday morning. So a mere 24 hours ago, I was still working through this, this really dark, oppressive feeling. And I feel flippin' fantastic right now. I feel so clear and so clean, and I feel like the pure light within me is expressing itself and majorly outweighing any, any residual fear. And I, I recognize that this is a ephemeral state, every, everything that you experience is ephemeral. It's timeless, it can never be repeated. Everything only happens once. Cue the cicadas, I don't know if you can hear them. They're just letting me know that like, spot on, right place, right time. So this too shall pass. Yesterday I felt a way, and today I don't feel that way. And um, I truly don't feel like it's buried. I feel like it's gone. I feel like it's lifted. And that's a great feeling. Oh, I said that that was the last thing. There's another really important piece. And as yoga students, you know that yoga is the union of um, using the body and the mind and the spirit to help each other find health in all, in all three of those levels and layers. And so, uh, there's a way that you can really use your body, use your physical movement and motions to express what's stuck in the emotional body. So luckily, I was able to go on a hike to uh, the river with a friend yesterday. And just the movement, the movement, the movement, being in nature, 
there's another tool. Um, it was really important for me to just express movement. Uh, and if you can't go on a hike, you can always shake. You can shake, shake the trauma out of your body. Uh, and maybe you don't want to call it trauma because trauma is a different thing than fear, for sure. But we all have trauma unless you've done your work and released your trauma. So remember to use your body to also express your emotions. Thank you for this feeling. Thank you for these tools. Thank you for being here with me. Will you sit with me for another minute and breathe? Just being with what is. Staying in your Vishnana Maya Kosha, even with your eyes open. Noticing without creating a story. take an audible sigh or three. <sighs> Remember that your breath is the only thing that you can control. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you. And the pure light within you guide your way on. Satnam. Om Namah Shivaya. The multitudes inside me see the multitudes inside you. Namaste. Have a beautiful Sunday.